Okay, as promised, uh, we have the management of Jupiter Lifeline Hospitals. Their IPO opens today for subscription. Their IPO size, remember, was reduced. It has been uh, reduced to 542 crores versus 615 crores that was planned earlier. The company has already raised 261 crore rupees from 39 anchor investors. And we have Ankit Thakkar, who is the chief executive officer at Jupiter Lifeline Hospitals, who joins us now. Uh, they have three hospitals that are currently functioning and they have another one that is under construction as well. Uh, so we'll talk more about that. Uh, Ankit, thanks a lot for joining us here in the studio Thank and you, all the best with your IPO journey. Just want to start by asking you what exactly, uh, you know, will you be doing with the funds? What's the utilization like? Uh, will you use any of it to retire debt? And uh, what is the way forward? Thank you for having me. So uh, of the 542 clause that we are raising in uh, primary equity, uh, most of it will go towards debt repayment. We have about 500 odd clause of debt. So post IPO, we'll be completely debt free. Okay. Uh, balance, of course, will be used for some general corporate purposes. Okay. The way forward in terms of uh, the growth strategy is that once we become debt free, uh, it will leave more free cash uh, in our hand. Hmm. And uh, that we plan to use to plow back uh, for further growth of the company. So, you know, this entire business has picked up in a big way, right? The hospital uh, industry, I guess post-COVID as well. Uh, medical tourism is also back in a big way. Uh, your own occupancies have been pretty steady. I mean, combined occupancies have been at about 63%. Is this a run rate that you can sustain through the course of FY24 and 25? And what would the growth triggers be for you? Uh, yes, so on the consolidated basis, that has been our uh, occupancy. But if you split it out by units, uh, which are in you know various phases of maturity, the first one, Thane, which is 15 years old now, has occupancies of about 70% and uh, sustained very well. Uh, the second one was Pune, which was five years old. End of last year, we were at around 67 odd percent of occupancy, and we had an opportunity to add few more beds brownfield in the same asset. So we have undertaken that expansion, brought the occupancy down to mid 50 percent, uh, you know, giving us a significant headroom uh, for growth in Pune. Similarly, in Indore, which is planned for 430 beds, we are just operating 230 currently, at occupancy of 40 percent. So there's a, you know, Indoor is just getting started and has a long road ahead of itself. Okay, all right. Hi, Ankit. Uh, good to see you in the studio. You know, it's, Thane is bulk of your business, right? And I'm just going through the note and it appears there are some PILs against uh, this Thane land out there. Could you tell us, give us an update on that? Uh, do you expect things to get cleared out? Yes, uh, there are actually three. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, as a preamble, I think what I want to say is multiple high courts in the country, including the Supreme Court of India, have come down heavily on, you know, abuse of PIL as a process. Uh, some uh, litigants have also been imposed costs by the court okay. uh, for abuse of process and malicious PILs. Mm -hmm. We believe that most of these are kind of in this bracket. Uh, and uh, for the six plus years, some of them are filed. The court has not even admitted those PILs. Okay. Uh, so in our view, uh, they are not very serious. But because they are in court, it is not appropriate to talk too much about it. But this is our general view. But you want to assure the investors out there there's nothing to worry in terms of business. That is our assessment and that. our legal counsel. We clear that then out of the way. A couple of more aspects. Medical tourism, I think it's in mid-single digits for you. But I guess, you know, there is scope to grow out there. So are you looking at that, point number one? And point number two, as a percentage of your total revenues, how much is surgical revenue? So uh, to start with medical tourism, uh, it is not a major focus area as far as we are concerned. Okay. Our thought is that healthcare uh, should essentially be seen as a hyper local service. Okay. Uh, if you know any one of us uh, were to think about our own selves, if we were to need a hospital, how far are we willing to travel to reach a good hospital? Mm. Twenty, thirty minutes, not more than that. Yeah. So wherever we are located, we choose locations uh, which are densely populated uh, residential communities mm -hmm. uh, and which are relatively underserved in terms of uh, corporate or tertiary healthcare. Mm. And those are the locations where we are based. And uh, because of that, there's enough and more of local demand which we, uh, you know, aspire to serve. So medical tourism has it's never a been focus a area. focus area. And what about surgical revenues? So we don't really track too much of, uh, you know, medical, surgical, etc. breakups uh, because we believe, uh, you know, you have to do what, uh, mm. what you have to do. The kind of patients who come in and whatever they need. If they need a surgery, they do. If they don't, they don't. Mm. So we don't really track that. 
actively as a ratio. Okay. I think what the street would also like is the fact that this is a high margin business in general for the industry and for your own business as well. You've clocked in I think 23% margins in the year gone by and on an average over the last many years it's been around 20%. Uh, so is there scope to increase margins further in the years to come? So, uh, to some extent, because uh, the 23% blended margins include the uh, financial results of our Indore hospital, which is just two years old and just around EBITDA break-even stage. Mm. Yeah. So, there is a little bit of dilution effect uh, because of the Indore hospital. Once that matures, and uh, then maybe you could see a little bit of uh, growth in numbers. Mm. But mid-20% odd margins are... Uh, respectable and acceptable in our view. So mid 20% is something that you can hold on to. Now the reason I'm asking you about margins is because uh, I'm sure you have expansion plans as mm -hmm. well to get into new cities, right? You have a plan to expand to 2500 beds in the next few years mm -hmm. in, the, in several micro markets. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. And uh, you know, in the first one to two years, I think the hospital business is not very profitable. Absolutely. So would that impact your margins uh, as you uh, go ahead with these expansion plans? Definitely. So, uh, our growth plan, we prefer the greenfield uh, mode of expansion. We like to buy the land, design and build custom uh, built facilities and hospitals and then operate them. Currently, as we speak, we are constructing a 500 bed hospital in the Dombi Valley region of uh, Mumbai metropolitan area. Mm. Uh, that will take around two to three years to get commissioned. Besides that, uh, we are looking to add a couple of more uh, new hospitals, uh, but we have thought that we would uh, want to limit our growth to the Western Indian region currently. Right. Uh, so that is a growth plan. As regards uh, the first couple of years, definitely uh, it, w it could take anything between one or two years to achieve a EBITDA break-even stage. Yes. Uh, there is uh, no hiding away from that. Uh, but as uh, we see where we are in if maybe two or three years from now, by the time Dombi Valley comes up, Indore should have matured, Pune and uh, Thana already uh, in advanced stages of maturity. So there will be three functioning and mature hospitals to act as shock absorbing capacity for one which will be new, you know. Okay. So as a consolidated level, we don't expect a huge dent in the PNL. But so, apart from Dombi Valley, any others that are planned in the near future? Uh, we are looking to uh, acquire some more lands. Nothing is signed uh, as of now uh, hmm. to talk about. But we are looking to add some more facilities in Western India. And 2,500 beds is the target. Something like that. What is the rough capex you will associate with this to scale from your current capacity towards this 2,500? So for uh, Dombi Valley, we have planned about a crore a bed. Okay. Uh, going forward in the next one or two years, depending on how the uh, inflation pans out, we may have to uh, budget for a slightly higher cost uh, in the uh, newer facilities. Okay. But the current uh, hospital that is under construction, a crore a bed. And current capacity is? 1,200 beds. 1,200 beds. Yeah. So approximately so, 1,200 crores more. Uh, yes, something like that. 12 but you'll have yeah. cash flows and you'll be debt free as well. Correct. Okay, all right, Ankit. It's uh, good to speak to you. Thanks so much for coming down to our studio. Wishing you all the best with this IPO. And on the listing day, we'll push you a little bit more for some numbers as well. Wishing you all the best. Thank you so much.